guys, welcome back to The Playing Kids. Now get ready, because it's gonna be a really fun night. Now, as you guys know, this month's theme is responsibility, which is showing that you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Now tonight, we're gonna talk about being responsible with words. But first, let's practice our memory verse for the month. Now, this month's memory verse is from Luke 16.10, and it says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Now, take a couple minutes and practice it yourself. Awesome job. Now, before we get into worship, I want to take a few moments to talk about our memory verse. You guys are getting pretty good with saying it, but having a monthly memory verse is more than just saying it. Knowing what it means is really important too. So, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. This is huge for life. Whether you're at home, at school, or at work someday when you're older, if you can prove that you can do good things and be responsible with the little things that are given to you, you can be given more because people can trust you. It's like with our Bible story from last week, right? The servants who did more with what their master gave them received more, but the servant who buried his in the ground had what he got taken away. And in the end, he had nothing. Well, this week we're continuing this idea of being responsible with what you're given, particularly with words. God gave us the ability of words to build people up and express his love for them. But that's not always what happens, right? Sometimes it's easy to say something mean to someone, especially if they make us angry. The Bible talks about using words to make good choices. Now, let's worship together and then get right into it.
Hello, I like a tall hat and you the line degrees. No, no, no. A tall hat and you are the line No, 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 no. Uh, he wants a tall hat with a lemonade, and I would like a South Coast salad with a grilled chicken and a lot of water noise. A lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot understand what they're saying. Me neither. I don't get it. Hello. How's it going? Ciao. Konnichiwa. Welcome to a brand new so-and-so show. I'm Steven. And I'm Lawson. And we are talking about one of the most powerful things in the world today. Ooh, Niagara Falls. No. Your Aunt Margaret's perfume? Also no. My bicep? Definitely no. Come on. I'm talking about our words. Ah, yes, our words. They are powerful things that we have to control at all times. Correct, my friend. So I thought maybe we should play a game. A game of words that's been played on this show before. You don't mean. <gasps> the secret word. The game when you say the secret word, you get body slammed by a wrestler. <laughs> power, 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 power. Or you get baked beans poured on your head. Or slime. Lots of slime. Oh, ah, ah. Why would we play that game? I've been assured that nothing will be dumped on our heads and no one will body slam us. Yeah, that's what they want you to think. But just in case, it's probably best if we don't say the secret word. Inside this sealed envelope is the secret word. Is that gonna happen every time? Maybe. Oh. So, neither one of us knows what the word is, but it's an ordinary word that we use every day. And when we say the word, we get the consequences. Hey, that's my sound effect. We can share. Fine. Now, it's time to show the world what the word is. You will know the word, and we will not. Everyone got it? Perfect. We'll just continue on with the rest of the show. And if we say the secret word, we get the consequences. Let's do this, Steven. Did you know that according to the internet, there are currently 171,476 English words in use? Really? No, I did not. And did you also know that there's over 260,000 Italian words? Mamma mia. Did you also know that there are over 1,100,376 Korean words. Wow, that is crazy. And to me, you know what's even crazier? There's only 93,000 Spanish words. I knew I should have taken Spanish in high school. What'd you take? French. Ooh, 130,000. Wow. What'd you take? A Swedish. 600,000. Swedish? Yeah, I wanted to know what the chef from the Muppets was saying. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Ah, ah, no. Ah. 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 Ah.
Game. Oh, gotcha. What's the word? Okay. Oh, man. No, 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 oh, no, sorry! <sighs> sorry. Well, what are we talking about today, Kellen? Choosing your words carefully. Great. Take it away. So today's Bible story is actually a verse that was written in the letter by Paul to the Jesus followers in the city of Ephesus. You can read the letter yourself in a book called Ephesians. And like I said, this verse is all about words. Paul wrote, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouth. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. It's really crazy to think about that being written 2,000 years ago, and it's still something we need to hear today. Sometimes we use words that are hurtful, and we lash out in anger and hurt people's feelings. But Paul wrote that we should use words that build others up and meet their needs. Words that are helpful. We all have the same words to choose from. It's up to us to decide which ones we're going to use. We can decide if we're going to tease or to praise someone. Do your words harm or do they calm in a situation? Is what you're saying rude or are you trying to be courteous? Are your words out for revenge or are they offering forgiveness? It's really your choice. You can allow your words to get out of control and be hurtful or you can use your words wisely and be helpful. Is it always going to be easy? No way. But can we do it with God's help? No doubt. That is great, Kellen. Thank you for using your words to teach us that lesson. Yeah, Kellen, you're the best. Thanks. And you guys are A-O-J. Uh, I think you mean A-O-K, -okay, Kellen. Oh, no! Thanks, Kellen. No problem. I'll see you next time. I wouldn't miss it. Bye. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Trying to think of what words to say next. Here, I'll help you. Reveal the question! Why do your words matter? Well, as someone who has to constantly monitor what comes out of his mouth, I can tell you that when you don't control your words, people get angry, feelings get hurt, and you're never allowed to go to that Applebee's ever again! And on the flip side, words can encourage people and make them feel better. To paraphrase Spider-Man's uncle, words are powerful, and with that power comes great responsibility. Wow. That's really good, Lawson. Mm -hmm. That's like a rule for life. Ooh. Use your words wisely. And whatever you do, don't say a secret word. Because it really stings. You really stink. Hey, your words hurt me. Sorry, man. We both stink. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for watching, everybody. That was The So-and-So Show! Bye, everybody! We'll see you next time! It really smells bad. The I know. smell lingers. Most people poop their pants. I'll see you hoot their hands. <laughs> Real men from higher heights. Real men what? Real men from higher heights. <laughs> Never mess with minty mouthwash. Bless you. <laughs> the moon. The moon creaks in your window. The moon creaks in your window? Yes! <laughs> paddle, possums, paddle. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That's it! How'd you get that? I'm gonna tell you guys a story, something that I'm not particularly proud of, but it really taught me the power that words have. When I was younger, I used to go to my grandma's all the time. She was my best friend as a kid. I would go there maybe two or three times a week, and I kind of took it for granted. She spoiled me a little bit. You know, I liked watching movies, having my back rubbed, eating cookies, all the good stuff. Well, one day when I was over there, my grandma and I got into a really big fight. I don't remember what it was about now, but I remember telling her that I hated her. My grandma, who was always so caring for me, I said that I hated her, 
and that I wish I had a different grandma. Of course, in my anger, I stormed off into the other room, leaving her all alone. After a few minutes, I heard it. My grandma was crying. My words, what I told her, had made her cry. That was when I really learned how badly words can hurt someone. Of course, I ran back to her and apologized and told her that I loved her very much, and she forgave me for it. But I still knew that I'd made her really, really sad, and I couldn't fix that. There would always be the memory in her head of what, of what I had said, and I couldn't take that away. Our words are something that many times we don't really think about, but we should. We need to be careful with what we say because it is so easy to hurt somebody. However, it is also just as easy to make someone happy with words. Instead of speaking hatred, speak love to someone. Tell them how much they mean to you. Ask them how their day's going. Tell them you're proud of them. All of these things will bring joy and happiness to people. And that's what we as Christians should be doing every day. Now, we have one more worship song to close out the night. Parents, take this time to get everything ready for your activity. Mr. 